All right. Morning, evening, afternoon, good night, whichever it may be. So we just had done with this family party, and one of my relatives, bless her heart, it was kind of cute and funny. She was talking about like making some jam or something, and got a little bit fermented, and she thought it might be alcoholic. And anyways, so all of the relatives that are friendly towards alcohol were giving her a hard time because obviously Mormons don't drink alcohol, and because she liked the taste of it or whatever it might have been, they're giving her a hard time as if she's some sort of alcoholic. And that's that's the dilemma of Mormonism is you try to fit in a little bit by saying, "Ooh, my my fermented jam tasted nice," and now in everyone else's eyes you're a hypocrite and a liar and a thief and a plunder. Um, but really, it's not a big deal. Um, any Mormon in there right mind and would be like silly goose um, but that's a silly thing as it may be it happens a lot with um, with Mormons something as simple as tasting you know fermented jelly and then someone else makes them think that they're like going to hell or that they're the worst person ever or conversely someone on the opposite side is like oh well might as well throw in the towel now you blew it so I'm just give up here and that's really the the main point that I wanted to emphasize is thinking about how any mistake that we make, whether it be as little as enjoying a little bit of fermented uh, jelly or um, something as, as grievous as uh, robbing a bank or torturing a loved one or something, you know, something really dreadful, um, we can all repent. We can be saved and we can come unto Christ. So something that is, is very uh, a stark and a different contrast in an LDS point of view as far as the, the act of repentance goes is the amount of, of time it takes to repent or the amount of effort it takes. Um, in some religious philosophies it's as simple as just saying I'm sorry or please please God forgive me, something of the like, or, or maybe um, versions of different prayers need to be recited in order to receive forgiveness. In the LDS faith, um, what's required for for what we call repentance? Um, one of the easy ways to remember we had oh yeah, like I got a little little halo up here. Sorry about that. I'm not trying to be sacrilegious. I promise. Um, but anyways, repentance. So one of the ways that we remembered this repentance was the A, B, C, Ds of repentance. So the first thing you need to do is A, which is acknowledge. So First thing, first step towards repentance is acknowledging that you actually have offended God, that you've done something wrong. Um, that can be a sin of commission, which means actively doing something that you know you shouldn't do, or you know that's something that's rebelling against God, or a sin of omission, which is um, neglecting duties that you should do, you know, um, helping helping your neighbor that, that slipped and fell, you know, that's... It's something you should do is go help her out, um, and maybe that's that's a, not a typical sin, but loving the neighbors itself is is a commandment. And so, if you're not um, loving others around you, then that could be a sin of of omission. You're neglecting to love them. So that's the first thing. Acknowledge. So acknowledge that what you're doing is wrong. Um, the second letter is B, and that stands for be sorry. So you're not only just acknowledging that it was wrong, but you feel bad, you're sorry, you, you want to um, you want to make things right. You want to, um, from now on, go in and help the old lady. Um, you want to repay the money that you stole from the bank. You want to go, um, you want to go apologize, you know. So that's the be sorry part. Um, and C is confess. So um, usually for most every sin, you can confess to God. You can pray to him and tell him that you've acknowledged you've done something wrong and that you're sorry for it. You pray and you confess. You say, God, this is what I've done wrong. Um, please forgive me. Um, something that is not entirely unique to the Mormon faith, as it's also a doctrine founded in the Bible, so many of the Christian world also practices this, 
is to tell um, tell another of your mistakes, so to speak. Um, and this is is generally reserved for more serious sins. So we have what are called bishops in the church. These men have been given keys. They have um, stewardship to receive revelation for God on behalf of their ward. And for more grievous sins, um, I don't know, let's, you know, any kind of addictions, let's say pornography, alcohol, tobacco, um, maybe not all those need to be confessed to the bishop, but the bishop can definitely help you through the repentance process on each of those. He can give you guidance and addiction helplines. He can give you um, prayer. He can give you a priesthood blessing. He can give you insight that might not otherwise be given um, from others. Um, so anyways, first and foremost, you confess to God, and if you if it's something adultery, um, rape, you know, some of these more serious things, then it is advantageous and in your best interest to confess to a bishop. That way he can help you through the repentance process and he can tell you everything that's um, needed to, to happen spiritually that can help you better prepare to full activity in the church to receiving God's love better. It's in no way a form of of punishment or to be degrading. Anything that the bishop recommends is for your spiritual growth. If you're continually to sin against the Holy Ghost and continually sinning against your promises, your covenants which you've made with God, um, the bishop might um, might take action in, in the way of saying, um, you know, those blessings, maybe such as the sacrament or temple attendance, are going to be withdrawn until you're spiritually ready to make those promises again with God. Because when you're making those promises and breaking them every week, it's not doing you any good. It's better to to be prepared spiritually and to, to work towards um, work towards perfection. None of us are ever perfect. Um, but there are there are definitely degrees to which to which we are working, and although my my sins are different than your sins, and I'm not going to judge you for, for choosing to sin differently than I, as the saying goes, uh, bishops have a real charge to, to be able to be a common judge in Israel. They can judge whether you're being sincere, and I would say nine times out of ten, or even ten times out of ten, I've never been in a bishop's shoes, but he can judge um, what is best for you to help you to fully repent, to come unto Christ, and to feel his love. It's a pretty miraculous thing. Um, some very spiritual experiences I've had in the bishop's office when, when he's counseled me and given me guidance. And some very spiritual experiences just praying to God as well. So we've got the A, acknowledge. B, be sorry. C, confess. And D, don't do it again. E, ever. Nah, I made that one up. But don't do it again. So that's what we're striving to do, is we're striving to follow the prophet's counsels. We're striving to follow Jesus Christ. And we can. We can be perfected in him. The only way that we can become perfect as, as we're striving to be is through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And no matter what we do, we're always going to fall short. Um, but as we remember the repentance process, we will edge sins out of our life and until that perfect day when we are resurrected and live with God again. So tonight, pray to God. Feel it out in your mind and in your heart. Think about what have I done today that needs to be repented of? What have I done this week? What have I done this year? What have I done in earlier stages of my life? And converse with God about it. Think about it. Um, talk with Him openly and see what it is you need to do to make recompense. That's part of the be sorry. The second one is to make things right. So if you need to go apologize to your spouse, your friends, your neighbor, um, the kid you offended when you were in third grade that you were bullied to, reminds me of Billy Madison. I'm glad I called that guy. Um, but be sorry and go make those those recompenses. Go go say sorry. Go Go repay the money you stole from the bank. 
or the candy bar as it was in my case when I was like five. My dad made me give it back, but it was a good lesson. Um, you'll feel better once you do, and that's something that I've striven to implement in my marriage, and I really feel that um, that God enters into our house and into our marriage when when I am humble enough to say sorry and to acknowledge when I am wrong and, and, and need to repent in in the simple relationship of our, of our marriage and, and how much more in the relationship with God. So leave that with you. In Jesus Christ, amen. Oh, you won't love it unless you live it.